So let's see how these bad boys look. This is what we're gonna cover today. If you follow the channel closely or you follow me on the social media accounts, you will know that I'm trying to have AC on this car. However, this car has from mount intercooler and I'm trying to get AC the more efficient way. I probably can put a condenser there between you know the intercooler and the radiator but i'm really tired of looking at this radiator and you see the condition how this look as well as the front mount intercooler both need some love i don't have any issues temperature issues should i say especially after i replace the rx7 fans for rx8 however my goal is to get a rx8 ac compressor and RX-8 condenser because it has a built-in dryer and since the lines and everything are going to be custom made I guess I'm just going to go V-mount however I can do a V-mount until I solve this issue these are the lines for the oil coolers factory R1 oil coolers and if you can see the condition of those you know these are stuck so I think it's time for me to replace them so I'm just going to call this phase, phase one, to get the AC in the car. Phase one will be the oil coolers, phase two, the V-mount, and then phase three, condenser, AC compressor, and the lines. I was in Facebook and I saw at Mishimoto at saying that they were going to sponsor several people. The only thing that you had to submit an application, you had to submit a picture, and I got picked. But when I got the response, they just told me that they were going to give me 15% off of everything I order. The only condition is I have to uh, post pictures and use hashtag Mishimoto, Team Mishi, and Cool by Mishimoto. I mean, I still take it. I was going to buy everything on Amazon and I was still able to get this. I think it was like almost 30 bucks off. So that's something. And they sent me this as well. I'm just going to open it with you guys. That's why I wasn't posting it on social media account yet. So let me open it and then show it to you. So this is the Mishimoto swap bag. And they just basically sent me a couple of good stuff just to show their brand. I forgot to tell you guys, I need to add two decals in the car as well. Yep, there, there they are. And they are massive. You sure you don't like to add decals in the car? I'm gonna show you the only one that I have that is mine. I do have the stickers underneath the hood and I'm probably just gonna put it for a while, take some pictures, gave them some promo and then remove it. So we're gonna be installing those and replacing the factory ones. However, I'm gonna be checking the compression of this engine as well. I haven't done any compression test since I got the car. The guy, the owner that had this car before told me that each rotor was at seven bar however it's been a couple years i haven't abused this car yet so i'm assuming the compression hasn't changed a lot but it's still gonna check before going to the dyno again if you're interested to get it this is the this is the link and the one that i picked was the orange one i'm assuming these are the instructions so let's get started So I read the instructions, basically the first time when you put the battery, uh, you have to turn this on and then wait for 30 minutes without the sensor hooked up and it will calibrate internal pressure. I think the three minutes are up, I just read the whole thing. Basically you want the car at normal temperature because uh, cold engine readings may be up to 10 to 15 psi and then the hot engines will read lower than normal. You have to make sure that the ignition is off and the fuel system as well. It doesn't matter if you use the trailing and the leading plug with the sensor. The sensor can be tied by hand. You have to crank until all the faces of the rotor are catched. And then it gives you the guide for compression results. So above 120 psi, excellent. 19 to 110, very good. 109 to 100 is good. So I'm assuming the reveal for my engine base on the seven bar was good. So I'm not expecting anything above 109. 99 to 85 is fair, failing below Mazda specs. And then below 85 says 
<laughs> start saving reveal coming all right so i'm kind of getting scared right now i'm gonna remove the plug for the fuel pump and for the ignition based on my uh kit for the ignition i just remove this and the ignition should be off so wish me luck you can do it So I was able to connect the sensor to the L1 port. Make sure you don't connect the sensor to the line before you put the sensor in the engine. It would be easier that way. But with the extender, I'm able to do it by myself because the instructions said that you can't stop the cranking until you get the reading. So I'm gonna turn on this, the engine is on temperature, and then I'm just gonna start cranking. Make sure that it's in neutral, and then let's go. I'm so scared. So that's what I got, but I'm reading these instructions and it says remove all trailing top spark plug and screw the sensor into the plug hole. So, but something that I forgot was to do it at wide throttle open. What did you say? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove the trailing, T1 in this case, and then I'm gonna press the gas pedal all the time that I'm doing that. Something that it says on the paper is every time that you're gonna move the sensor from one port to another in the engine, make sure you turn off the tester. So I'm just gonna do that, and then let's do what I just said. Alright, second rotor. Alright, all of them were between good and uh, fair falling below master spec. That's what I was expecting, so I'm more calm now. Lloyd, may I have the COS please? Oh, I'm so happy! I'm just gonna... I almost lost you today, didn't I? Um, I still have to figure out the ignition issue. I checked spark plug wires, I changed the spark plugs. Everything in the ignition system is new. Check continuity on the spark plug wires as well. Check the timing, the timing was a little bit off, but it's still doing the same issue. Not as bad though. So, I'm just gonna move the car back to the garage and then let's start working with the oil coolers. I drained the oil, so I'm just gonna start removing the lines from here all the way to the coolers. So that's the first one. That one goes all the way down here. So I have to figure out how the hell I'm gonna remove that line, which I'm assuming I will have to remove that bracket and then removing this one. This has some brackets holding in place that I had to figure out how to get there, but yeah, it shouldn't be an issue unless I will have to remove all that. That's the one that is a concern right now. We'll see. So far I see a, a thing is a 12 
that one looks like 17 and then the one that is holding this in place but i will have to remove the bracket out because that's a stud um i don't see do you have another one oh yeah one there i'm gonna mark it whenever i edit the video all right so the bracket is out and i think since it's out i'm just gonna clean it use the opportunity to paint it in wrinkly brush and then paint it black wow i haven't painted the engine and all this stuff because i need to have to remove it because i really don't like that color but that time is gonna come whenever i have to rebuild the engine i'll be able to powder coat everything to make it look one color and you know better so far i'm just gonna remove the bracket that is holding this line and i believe is which is that one which <laughs> it doesn't even have the bolt holding in place and then just go this oil cooler all right got the first line out i have to do the same with that one this is what i use to be able to lose that up that bracket holds those in place so in order to remove the one that is on the timing cover i think i have to remove this one from here as well. All right, the oil coolers and lines are out. You just have to clean all this mess and start routing the lines. I'm still trying to figure it out because I want AC. So I have to make sure that if I run them this side that I have enough clearance. Also, I want to go beam out. So I'm assuming it takes part of this side so we'll see something i wanted to show you had issues removing this banjo bolt you can see it was hurt i tried to remove it with the adjustable wrench but i didn't make it so i ended up bordering 23 millimeter wrench and that worked out pretty good still need to figure out how the bansai brackets for the coolers go but i'm gonna use the opportunity that the sun is out to start cleaning sanding all that part and try to paint it All right, based on what I saw on Bansai Racing website, apparently I have to remove this bracket and uh, the bracket, the one that I brought from him goes flush to here and then this bolt hold it in place. But I'm not sure, they look like they come, the other bracket come from here, but I don't see any hole. I see one in the far here, so I don't know if I have to drill one. I'm waiting for the brackets to get dry to muck it up in place but i'm pretty sure i have to remove this so that's what i'm gonna do and i'm gonna see if i can remove this one because it doesn't seem like i'm gonna use it so all four brackets are out it's not that hard but you have to remove 10 millimeter bolt over there and then a 10 millimeter bolt here you push this forward and then you have to remove the 10 millimeter knot behind this. This is the hardware for the brackets. Um, I'm just trying to separate them to see if I can figure it out. There's no instructions. Um, I'm just trying to do based on what I see on their website. I'm assuming these are for the oil coolers because of the holes here are bigger. And this one, I'm assuming it goes like this. Thing is, I'm not sure if I will have to remove that to be able to make it fit on the top hole. Let me play with it. Um, the same is on the other side. There's another reservoir there and it's the same. This is what I got so far. This side, I didn't have to mess with this bracket, but this apparently goes down. You can see there, but on the other side, I have to lose this bracket to accommodate this one straight so these two uh holes line however if i mount the oil cooler there's a gap even though i have this on the lower side so i'm not sure if i'm doing something wrong on this side seems like this is the correct way i don't have any issues issues there however 
if I line it here on this hole, this is what I was talking about earlier. There's no hole in that location, so I just have to drill a hole there, which, I mean, it's not a big deal. That gap, um, I'm gonna keep playing with it to see if I can figure it out, and then I'll show you guys. Still have a spacer there, but I think this is the bigger oil cooler. This is how it's gonna it's supposed to look. I'm kind of bumped down about this. I'm probably gonna, I don't know, create some spacers to make it, I don't know, in the middle, but it, it feels steady anyway. This side looks good. I'm assuming this bracket fits better with the bigger oil cooler. However, I will install the front bumper to see if it's center or how the oil cooler looks in the vent and then I'll finish the install. Houston we have a problem so it definitely have to go in an angle however the, the issue that I'm having now <laughs> is that this bumper instead of going straight down has this like uh, I don't know 40 inches in that's what she said and then it goes back out. If I put the bumper where it's supposed to be, this is how it will look in the front, but check the bracket. So I lift the bracket up like an inch. So definitely we'll have to get the spacers. I'm gonna mark the holes there. I thought I was gonna use only one hole and I'm gonna end up using both. It kind of touch or barely touch the oil cooler, which is good. You won't scratch the paint. All right, this is taking longer than I expected, but I installed the other side here. I realized why they sent a lot of washers. I went to the actual website on the computer, not on my cell phone, and I realized that all these instructions are there. So uh, you're supposed to create a spacer with the washers on this bracket to make it fit uh, my issue is the bumper so the bumper just fit perfectly here and it just push the oil cooler up so I will have to make spacers there as well I ordered rubber spacers for that however the position of this one in the bumper it kind of almost fits perfect versus the other side that the the vent in the bumper is is on this side that oil cooler sits closer to here so i remove this bracket to be able to accommodate the oil cooler that's this is probably an inch to the side to see if it will look better so i'm just gonna work on that and then i'm gonna show you how to assemble the PTFE lines with the AM fittings. Now that everything is where it's supposed to be, I have to figure out where I'm gonna run the lines. I also need to figure out where I'm gonna install the oil thermostat. But something that I wanna show you guys is how to assemble the fittings on the PTFE lines. It's kind of the same as the regular ones, but it does have this coupler and it can be a little tricky. I wish I can have a table and something to hold the fitting while I assemble it, but let's see how it goes. One eternity later. Today is the next day. I couldn't finish yesterday because I wanted to go to RPM. And the only place that I found to be able to install the oil thermostat was here. But I needed two fittings in order to make that happen. However, while I was in RPM, my boy Ryan gave me an idea based on Saki Bomb kit. So he's running the actual 90 degree fitting holding 
the oil thermostat. He doesn't have any issues, but I don't want to leave this in the air like that. I don't know if vibration is gonna cause uh, the feeding to break or, or something happen. And the oil, especially on rotary engines, is really, really important. If something happens and I lose oil, and what I'm gonna do, I might create a bracket like the saggy bomb, but either from that bolt, it's gonna be like a C shape because the old thermostat has a, like a bracket or using, there's a, a bolt underneath the AC compressor. I think that's it. I like it. And the V-mount's not gonna do anything. I saw another guy that had a black RX-7. They had the greedy V-mount and he had the saggy bomb kit, so. Here it is, you see how firm it feels. Um, I still want to create a bracket from there or I'll figure it out. But I just wanted to show you how I routed mine. This side goes to the cooler and this is from the cooler going. So the oil thermostat will open only when it reach certain temperature. And that's why I kind of wanted it closest to the block because the oil will run only a short distance because this is blocked if the oil temperatures are low. So the further I put it, more oil will be in the line without any reason. Again, that's my opinion. I'm not sure if the oil pressure will be affected the further the oil thermostat is, but that was my train of thought. So technically it goes there. This is the first oil cooler that will hit. You can see the bottom is still higher than the lowest point. Then it goes for this one. Go a little bit here go this way I probably can change the setup later on and get two of those one here one over there and then get a male to male union I'll deal with that whenever I go with the v-mount I was able to get the rubber spacers as well to prevent vibrations leave this oil cooler and then by the time I leave this one should be cool enough to go back to where the fuel filter is. I already put the new oil filter, ready pour four quarts of oil, and I remove already the fuse for the ignition, and I'm gonna unplug the fuel pump because you have to prime the system. The reason why I put only four quarters, that's gonna be closed, so I have to let the engine warm and then pay attention to the oil levels so I can pour at least one quarter more. As always, if you have any questions, you can hit me on my social media account, Tony West DIY, or at Gmail, Tony West DIY at gmail.com. Guys, I appreciate your support. Stay safe. God bless. Until the next one. Rock.